Ramo Hari Hari My dear Lord, your Lordship has introduced the system of sacrifices through the agency of Daksha, and thus one may derive the benefits of religious activities and economic development. Unless your regulative principles, the institution of the four varnas and ashrams is respected. The Brahmins therefore vow to follow this system strictly. We are reading today from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter 6, entitled Brahma satisfies Lord Shiva. In this very exalted assembly of Vaishnavas, Lord Brahma has bowed to Lord Shiva as his superior. Lord Shiva is bowing to Brahma as his superior. Although Brahma is the father of Lord Shiva, although he is Apparently, secondary creator of the whole universe. He's respecting Shiva as being superior to himself. Because he knows that although Lord Shiva, by the inconceivable will of the Lord, was born from Brahma in his anger, Beyond that, in his spiritual status, he is a superior personality. We find the father offering obeisances to the son, and the son offering obeisances to the father. In Sri Chaitanya Charita Mrita, when Lord Chaitanya was living in Jagannath Puri, the residents of Srikanda were meeting with the Lord. Now there was a wonderful family, family of great devotees. The eldest was Mukunda Sarakar. Mukunda was a physician, such an excellent physician that even the king took medical advice from him. Although he had wife, children, occupation, he was a very great devotee, very humble devotee. We know the famous story where the king was sitting on a raised platform and called for his royal physician and he was inquiring from him. And while the king was inquiring, the sun was quite hot. So they brought a peacock fan to shade the king from the sun. The moment Mukunda Sarakar happened to see a peacock feather, he remembered Shamsundar. He remembered Brindavan, and he lost all control of his external consciousness and literally swooned in ecstasy and fell from the raised platform to the ground, unconscious. That was a long drop. So the king and his ministers, they ran down to see if the doctor was all right. And he came back to external consciousness. 
And the king asked, what happened? Why did you suddenly just swoon and fall down? Now, he could have been honest and say, because I saw the peacock feather and I went into a trance of ecstatic love. But Srila Prabhupada explains that actual great personalities, they never try to advertise their ecstatic love for Krishna by revealing symptoms of ecstasy to the public. Sometimes it may happen like this, uncontrollably, but it is never for cheap fame or prestige or honor. So he said that, O oh, king, I actually suffer a disease, something like epilepsy. And sometimes this happens to me that I fall unconscious. But the king, although he was a Mughal king, he understood the greatness of Mukunda, and he understood that he saw the peacock feather, remembered Krishna, and went into ecstatic love. So he said, better you go home today and I'll ask you my questions tomorrow. So this is Mukunda Sarakar. He had a brother whose name was Narahari Sarakar. We sing about him every evening. Narahari Adi Kari Chamara. Yes. During the arti of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is offering chamara, the yak tail whisk. One of the intimate associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In fact, he was so dear to Lord Chaitanya that it is said that Lord Chaitanya, in the role of a devotee, trying to teach people, that this Mayavad misconception is so dangerous. <clears throat> if anyone tried to glorify him as God, he would block his ears with his hands and cry out, Vishnu, Vishnu, do not contaminate me with this misconception. We are all eternal servants of Krishna. But this Narahari had such a loving relationship with Lord Chaitanya that he could sing Lord Chaitanya's glories as being non-different than Krishna, and Lord Chaitanya would be pleased. Now the uncle of Narahari and the son of Mukunda was the great Raghunandan Thakur. There are many beautiful stories about this devotee. Even when he was a small child, he exhibited such elevated expressions of love of God. So, on this day in Jagannath Puri, Lord Chaitanya asked Mukunda a very strange question. He said to Mukunda, Is Raghunandan your son, or is Raghunandan your father? Who is the father and who is the son between you? And Muk Mukunda Sarakar immediately replied that my son Raghunandan is my father and I am his son. Hare Krishna. And Lord Chaitanya was very, very pleased. And then Mukunda Sarakar explained why. He said, because he has given me Krishna consciousness. By his love and devotion, he has inspired me so deeply in Krishna consciousness. I consider him my father. And Lord Chaitanya said, yes. Whoever inspires us in devotional service to Krishna, he is our father. That is Vaishnav etiquette. And we find at the time of the speaking of Srimad Bhagavatam, here is the young boy, Shukadeva Goswami, sitting on the elevated Vyasasan. And amongst the people who were assembled to hear from him, sitting on a lower platform, was Vyasadeva, <laughs> the father, and also the guru of Shukadeva Goswami. 
he was sitting for seven days to hear his son speak because he understood the exalted position of his son. Of course, Shukadeva Goswami, with all humility, begged for the blessings and the permission of his father and all the assembled devotees. And it was on their order that he sat on the Vyasasan to speak. He's sitting on the Vyasasan, and Vyas is sitting in another place listening to him. This is the characteristic of etiquette where Shukadeva Goswami is offering obeisances to his father because he's in a superior position, but his father is also offering obeisances to Shukadeva because of his spiritual purity. Mukunda Sarakar is offering respect to his fa son as his father because of his spiritual enlightenment, and Raghunandan is offering obeisances and respect to his father as his father. So we have the same situation here in this chapter of Bhagavatam. Lord Brahma is offering respect to Shiva because of his superior spiritual position, and Lord Shiva is offering obeisances to Brahma because he is in a superior position as father. And here Lord Brahma is addressing Lord Shiva as an expansion of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who has an exalted position of being the controller of the entire universal creation. Brahma may be a creator of a particular universe, but under the power of Lord Vishnu, Lord Shiva and his consort Durga are the controllers of the entire material cosmic manifestation. He is explaining how the Lord Shiva has introduced the system of sacrifices through the agency of Daksha, the system of the Varnashram Dharma. And here in Purport, Prabhupada is explaining how necessary it is for society to carry on in a proper way, to accept in the proper spirit this Varnashram Dharma. Now, today, especially in the land of India, the caste system is a perverted expression of the Varnashram Dharma. People take seriously the external, superficial characteristics, but do not understand the actual spirit behind it. But factually, this is what happens historically in practically every religious system of the world. A great personality comes, an avatar or an empowered soul, and establishes a spiritual system, particular rules and regulations, particular rituals, a particular philosophy, Sanatan Dharma. Sanatan Dharma is the eternal occupation of the soul to love and serve God. Bhakti Vinod Thakur explains this Sanatan Dharma is introduced by the Lord through his various agents in different parts of the world, in different times of history, in particular proportions, in a particular context, according to the culture of that place. Krishna tells in Gita. He says, Long ago I I explained this science to Bibhaswan, the sun god. And it was explained to Ikshvaku and Manu. And it was carried down in disciplic succession of great kings in this way. But in due course of time, 
it has been forgotten. The real spirit has been lost. And therefore, I have come today to revive the original spirit, the original knowledge in the proper context. That is Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is nothing new. Actually, Krishna's Navayovanam, he's always new and fresh. But in one sense, nothing's ever new. We become very much enamored by new things. But really, what's new? When people say, what's new? The real answer is nothing. <laughs> what's new? Transcendental knowledge, Sanatana Dharma, is eternally existing in the spiritual world. It manifests at the beginning of creation when Krishna speaks to Brahma. And it may be explained in different ways and different styles, but it's the same thing. Prabhupada, he stressed this very strongly. He says, my only qualification is I am simply repeating the word of my Guru Maharaj, which has come down in disciplic succession, without adding or subtracting anything. Just telling it as it is. Now the tendency is people want something new. You could put all kinds of new packages, but even the packages, it's all old stuff, just recycled. <laughs> Material energy, it's been here since time immemorial. We can create new types of technology, but really, what is it? It's just the same old material elements just being you know, just recycled in various ways. So there's nothing new. Krishna is eternal. His message is eternal. But what happens is, due to the false ego, and due to the power of time, which has a destructive effect, Krishna says in Gita, when he shows the Virat form, to Rupa to Arjun, time I am devouring everything. Time destroys. And similarly, in any great spiritual system, by the power of time, mixed with the egoistic propensities of the practitioners, things are lost. <clears throat> in the Bible, the New Testament, Jesus spoke like this. He spoke to the Pharisees who were priests. And these priests were supposed to be you know, inspiring people in the essence of their religion. But they became so much concerned with just strictly following all the, all the rituals that they criticized. They criticized even an exalted person like Jesus, because in order to save people's souls, he wasn't strictly observing these rituals. They were condemning him, criticizing him. And he said about them, you understand the letter of the law, but you do not understand the spirit and the power behind it. And Srila Prabhupada was criticized for the same things. Srila Prabhupada understood Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda Prabhu's mercy. In, the, in this age of Kali Yuga, it's an emergency. It's like in the battlefield, if you're a doctor and somebody's suffering and about to die because a hand grenade just blew up in his face, may not be able to treat that person according to the, um, the standards of, of, a, of the medical books or the emergency room in a nice hospital. You do the needful to save the person. When Srila Prabhupada came to the West, he took the essence 
the Spirit. And he presented it in such a way that it would actually have effect of transforming people's heart and bringing them to the ultimate goal of life. He was criticized. He's eating eggplants. What is this eating eggplants? <laughs> he's taking, he's taking um, people who are addicted from, from the time of their womb in a culture of generations and generations of slaughtering every type of animal, eating everything, drinking liquor, having illicit sex, and he's curing them of all these things or surrendering to Krishna and they're criticizing why they're eating an eggplant. Huh? It's not bona f You're bogus. Nonsense. What is this? Why are you eating carrots? You shouldn't eat carrots. Why are you giving sacred thread to the, to the malechas? Not possible. I know one big, big Bhagavat reciter in India. He's no longer alive today. But he was saying that this Bhaktivedanta Swami, he told one of his very dear followers who told me this. He said, you know, he's, he's doing good work propagating the name of Krishna, but giving Brahminical initiation and sannyas to malachas and yavanas? Ah, sacrilegious. It's offensive. You cannot do this. It's not right. He said, because they're malachas and yavanas. He said, however much you teach them, however much they read scriptures, however much they chant the holy names, what is the result? Would you like to hear what they said about most of us? He said, all their sadhana, all their bhakti, the effect is, it's just like peeling layers off of an onion. Now, I know most of you don't know anything about onions. <laughs> but there are layers and layers and layers until there's nothing left. You just keep peeling off the layer and it still smells the same. He says, they're malachas. They're born in this karma. There's nothing they can do. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he didn't care about these. He understood the power of the mercy of the Lord. Sanatana Goswami explains that when <clears throat> even a person of the lowest caste, if they are initiated with Brahminical initiation by a proper spiritual master, he's considered to be a Brahmin. Just like bell metal is turned into, it's turned into gold by proper process. There was a king of Bengal named Subodhi Rai. And Subodhi Rai, he had a servant. Later the king resigned and his servant became the Nawab Hussein Shah, the king of Bengal. And one time he was alone with his wife, and his wife saw some scratches on his body, scar. Where did you get this? He said, oh, when I was a little boy, uh, Subhuti Rai, I did something wrong. He punished me to teach me a good lesson. He must be killed. The wife said, he must be killed. Disgrace. How can I kill him? He was like my father. He treated me so kindly. You know, he punished me, but it was for a good reason. No, he must be killed. So what to do? He didn't want to displease his wife. So he decided to kill him without killing him, by disgracing him. And you know what he did? He sprinkled water from the pot that was drunk by a malecha. And because that water was sprinkled on him, he lost his caste. And the whole society rejected him. 
He was no longer considered within the Hindu community. He had become a malecha. He wasn't allowed to do any worship. He wasn't allowed to go in the temples. He wasn't given any respect. Haribo. So he wanted to regain his position again as a Hindu in the society. So he went to some Brahmins. And all Brahmins gave him, this is very difficult. What? Sprinkled by a Muslim spot, huh? Malecha. You are Malecha. And they gave him all different. One of them said, take ghee and put it over fire till it's smoking and then drink it. If I drink it, I'll die. He said, yes, you will die. But because ghee is pure, in your next life, you will become a Hindu. Hare Krishna. So these were the types of, this is how serious it was taken. But he went to Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him, just chant Hare Krishna, go to Vrindavan, serve the Vaishnavas, and you will attain, not only being Hindu, you will attain the highest position of Paramhamsa. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not care about these things, nor did his associates. Adwaitacharya, he was extremely um, revolutionary in Shantipur when he was performing Shraddha, which is a very, very uh, serious ritual in Bengal in those days. And all the most qualified Brahmins assembled. And the highest honor was to be given the first portion of Mahaprasad. And he gave it to Haridas Thakur, who was untouchable by caste. And Haridas Thakur was so humble, he said, why are you giving to me? <laughs> I'm untouchable. There's so many qualified Brahmins here. And Advaita Charya said, because of your pure devotion, because your attachment to the holy name, by feeding you, I am feeding tens and millions of Brahmins. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, there were threats to his life. People wanted to assassinate him from the higher castes because he was giving sacred threads and sannyas, and he was giving high respectful positions to people from lower castes. When he went to Brindavan, most of the temples locked their doors and wouldn't let him or his disciples in. Something like us when we tried to go to Jagannath Puri today. But he didn't care because he understood what is the truth, the spirit. So the Varnashram system is very important. It is very sacred. Prabhupada is confirming that here. It is created by Krishna. In Bhagavad Gita, Chatur Varna Mayastaristam Gunakarma Vibhagasha. According to one's quality and according to one's activities, one falls in place within the four varnas and four ashrams. And Krishna says, I created this system. The Varnashram Dharma is all about taking responsibility for one's prescribed duties in life. It's not simply about persecuting various races with the egoistic conception that I am superior. In fact, Mahaprabhu prayed, Naham vi pro na cha narapati ranati vaisha na shudra. Here is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whose grandson of Nilambar Chakravarti, the highest Brahman, sannyasi, he's the top of everything. He's sannyasi, he's Brahman, he's God. <laughs> and he's praying, I'm not a Brahman, I'm not a Vaishya. I mean, I'm not a Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, or Shudra. I'm not a Brahmachari, Grihasta, Vanaprast, or Sannyas. 
These are all external designations. Who am I? Gopi Bharatua Pada Kamala Yora Das, 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 Anu Das. I am the insignificant servant of the servant of the servant of the servant of the Lord of the Gopis. This was his spirit. We are all simply, this is our eternal identity, the servant of the servant of the servant. And this is the spirit of the whole Varnashram society. But although he said that, I'm not Brahman, I'm not sannyasi, I'm just servant of the servant of the servant, still he observed his particular duties within Varnashram very strictly. When he was a Brahman living in Navadweep, he executed the duties of a Brahman very carefully. He took his three baths a day. He worshipped his Shalagram Shila. Yes. But he had hard time. After he came back from Gaya, when he would try to worship his Shalagram Shila, just seeing the form of Krishna in that Shila, he would start to cry. Can I tell you something about Shalagram Shila? In the mid-70s, Srila Prabhupada sent two Shalagram Shilas to New Vrindavan. And he sent a little note with it. I was the Pujari, so I was the person who was to worship. And he said that I am sending these Shalagram Shilas to New Vrindavan to establish the worship of Shalagram Shila in the Western world. Because at Iskand at that time, as far as I know, only Mayapur was worshipping Shalagram Shila. And then he gave instructions. Very interesting instructions. Because we were always thinking that Shalagram Shila is Vishnu. Which he is. But Prabhupada's perception was very sweet. He said, you can worship Shalagram Shila with, by bathing him with water and then offering him sandalwood oil, sandalwood pulp, and tulsi leaves. And Prabhupada said, first class worship of Shalagram Shila means tulsi leaves. And he said, and you can also worship him by um, drawing a face on him with Gopi Chandan, and you can offer him a dhoti, a chadar, a crown, and a flute. At Evo. <laughs> and if you want more elaborate instructions, you can consult Jananivas in Mayapurta. So Prabhupada saw Shalagram as Krishna, Shamsundar, playing flute, Murlidhar. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it was the duty of Brahmins in that time to worship Shalagram Shila. And he would perform all his Brahminical duties strictly. But when he picked up Shalagram, having the body of Krishna in his hands, he would become so ecstatic. Torrents of tears would pour from his eyes and his entire body and all his clothes were soaking wet with tears. And then he considered that I'm not clean to worship Shalagram. So he would go out and take his bath and come back and pick up Shalagram to do his daily puja. And torrents of tears would just uncontrollably pour from his eyes and he'd be soaking wet and he'd put Shalagram back in the altar and go to the Ganges and take a bath and come back and pick up Shalagram and bathe him. He would just be pouring tears all over his eyes. He was trying to restrain it. He couldn't do it. He would be soaking wet. He would go back to the Ganges. Finally, he went and got Gadadhar Pandit and said, you please do the puja for me because I, I am not qualified to do it. So this is how Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very, very strictly observed the duties of a Brahman. It describes in his history how every day he would worship Tulsi, he would water Tulsi, he would circumambulate Tulsi. And he was a Grihasta also. How strictly he observed his duties as a Grihasta. 
he, he was a teacher, Nimai Pandit. And in this way, as a Brahmin, he wouldn't charge anybody. Because in those days, a Brahmin did not ask. They did not, have, they did not work under anyone, and they didn't charge people. They performed their duty, and they got donations, and that is how they maintained themselves. So Lord Chaitanya very strictly followed these principles. He was a teacher. When he was East Bengal, Bangladesh today, he received so many gifts, he just brought them all home. But he never asked anything. He just gave. He just taught. And how he took care of his mother, and how he took care of his wife. And as a grihasta, one of the basic principles of grihasta ashram is charity to others especially guests that come to your house. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as a grihasta, he said that one who is in the householder status of society, duty to give in charity, said even if an unexpected guest comes to your home, you must treat that person in such a nice way with whatever capacity you have so that person is completely satisfied. Giving them sitting place, giving them prasad, giving them water. And Lord Chaitanya said, any householder's home that does not treat unexpected guests like this, he said, it is no better than a hole, which is a resident of a snake. That's Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He strictly followed his principles of Varnashram. And when he took sannyas, oh, when he was Grihastha, there's so many stories. He would invite Ishwarapuri and come, and, and he would feed him nice prasad, feed him with his own hands, and then ask him to enlighten him with Harikata. At one time, about 25 sadhus approached his house and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately, within a moment's notice, just had his wife and mother cooking, cooking, cooking and buying so many things and preparing and then he set them all down and served them to their full satisfaction. Yes, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu strictly followed the regulative principles of a grihasta and a brahman. And when he took sannyas, how strict he was. It was breaking the hearts of his devotees. When Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu traveled from Shantipur after taking sannyas to Jagannath Puri, he told his devotees, I'm going to, I want to go on a trip to South India to search for my brother Vishwarup. And he was traveling at that time with Nityananda Prabhu, Damodar Pandit, Jagadananda Pandit, and Mukunda. And they all said, well, we're coming with you. He said, no, I will go alone. None of you can come. And he explained why. And they were all based on his trying to follow strictly the principles of the Sannyasa Ashram. He said, Nityananda, he said, I have my danda. <laughs> Danda represents the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Danda represents all the demigods. The Danda represents complete surrender of the Lord. He said, Nityananda, you broke my Danda in three places and threw it in the river. Therefore, you cannot come with me. And as far as Damodar Pandit, or Jagarananda Pandit. He's always trying to give me sense gratification. Sannyasi cannot, cannot engage in sense gratification. But yet Jagarananda always wants to give me sense gratification. He wants to give me soft places to sleep. He wants to give me fine oils. He wants to give me good foods. But I must observe sannyas regulative principles. And Mukunda, he doesn't say anything. But when he say, sees me taking my three cold baths a day and sees me sleeping on the ground, his heart breaks. He cannot tolerate it. 
And when I see his heart break, my heart breaks. But I must follow the regulative principles of a sannyasi. He was so strict. He would not meet King Pratapurudra. Even the devotees were begging, begging. King Pratapurudra was ready to, to resign from kingdom and become a beggar in the streets. And if that didn't work, he was going to end his life. And the devotees were begging Lord Chaitanya, Sarva Boma Bhattacharya, Ramananda Rai, Nityananda. And Lord Chaitanya said, if you ask me to see this, if you ask me this question once more, I'm leaving this place and I will never return. Niskin Chananam. He said that for one who is in the renounced order of life, trying to cross over this ocean of material birth and death, to associate with such a person who's so much entangled in materialistic affairs is worse than drinking poison willingly. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained in this regard, he said that if you put a spot of ink on a white sheet, everyone will see it and point it out. Similarly, one in the renounced order of life who does not follow the regulative principles will be criticized by the whole of society. So yes, Lord Chaitanya was such a staunch sannyasi. But yet, I'm not a Brahmana, I'm not a Kshatriya, I'm not a Vaishya, I'm not a Shudra, I'm not a Sannyasi or a Brahmacharya, Grihastha or Vanaprastha. I'm the servant of the servant of the servant of the servant. This is the balance. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu observed the responsibilities of Varnashram because unless... Krishna explains in Gita, if I don't follow these principles, then the whole world will go to hell because they will follow me. Yat yat acharati stestas tat tat ebeta rojana sayat pramanam kurute lokas tadunuvartate. Whatever the leading people do, the common people will follow. Whatever exemplary, whatever example they set, the whole world will pursue. So Varnashram is very sacred. It's about following our duties, taking responsibilities on all levels. But what is the spirit? What is the purpose? The problem in the world today is sometimes we become so much attached to the external form of religious practice and ritual and even rules and regulations but we forget the spirit, the purpose behind it. And other people, they just talk about the spirit, but they throw out all the rules and regulations. Neither one can be effective. Atapum biyad vijastreshtas varana shrama vibhagasha shvanushtatasya dharmasya samsadir haritosha the whole purpose of all the varnas and all ashrams is just to please Krishna. Some Siddhir Haritoshanam. If Krishna is pleased, we are success in our execution of our duties. If Krishna is displeased, we are a miserable failure. We see people like uh, Gopal Chakravarti. He was a very powerful Brahmin who performed all the rituals of a Brahmin very expertly, very strictly, and he was a very learned scholar. But he offended a Vaishnav. Haridas Thakur. Was Krishna pleased with all his recitation of the Vedas? Was Krishna pleased with all his taking his baths and performing his pujas and doing all of his purificatory samskaras every day? Not at all. He offended a Vaishnav. He got leprosy. <laughs> and he suffered miserably. So yes, the rules and regulations are very essential to follow. 
of varnashram, dharma. But we must do it with the proper spirit. And the spiritual masters teach us how to do that according to time, place, and circumstance. In today's world, Prabhupada is explaining people want a classless society. That means no people do not understand what is their prescribed duties according to their occupation and their social status and spiritual status. What is their prescribed duties? What are the real rules and regulations they are obligated to follow? People do not understand their responsibilities and prescribed duties. The whole society becomes chaotic. Therefore, Krishna created Varnashram Dharma. And Srila Prabhupada explained how the second part of his mission was to really establish these principles. so that people would have a social environment in which devotional service is sustainable. I will end class with one example given in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in his South Indian trip and he stopped in Udupi where he met the Tattvavadis. Now, these men are really, really high-class Brahmins. Oh, how they do their rituals, how they do their regulative principles, how they do their prescribed duties in the Brahminical order is amazing. The pujas they perform hours and hours and hours and hours every single day and the, the, the exact intricate details being observed and worshipping the deity and they're taking their baths and they're and are not associating with anything that's, 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 that's contaminated. So Lord Chaitanya asked, what is the goal of life? And the leader amongst them said, he quoted from Vishnu Purana, that by observing the Varnashram Dharma principles, one can please the Supreme Personality of Godhead and go back home, back to Godhead. Something like that. Yes, Prahlad Maharaj? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, by, we can attain perfection by, by satisfying Vishnu, by observing the Varnashram Dharma strictly. And Lord Chaitanya said, no, it's not like that. The goal of life and the way to attain it is ecstatic love of Krishna, which can only be achieved in this age of Kali Yuga by hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. Harinam, 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 Eva Kevalam, Kalo, Nasteva, 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 Gatiranyata. In this age of Kali, there is no other way except the name of Krishna, the name of the Lord, who has many names and who has empowered all his names with his divine potencies. This age of Kali is an ocean of faults, but there's one benediction that simply chanting the holy name of Krishna, one can attain the supreme perfection of liberation. We take shelter of Krishna by taking shelter of his name. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to make this so emphatic that he made the supreme teacher of the holy name a person from an untouchable caste. Haridas Thakur. It doesn't matter what caste. It doesn't matter what nationality. It doesn't matter what sex. It doesn't matter what race. It doesn't matter what educational. Bodhimanta Khan was... Pundarik Vidyanidhi, they were very wealthy. And Kolavecha Sridhar was in poverty. Didn't matter. 
One of Lord Chaitanya's most intimate association with associates was Madhavi, who was a lady. Haridas Thakur was from untouchable family. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu demonstrated in so many ways in Jagai and Madhai, they were, they were criminals. <laughs> he gave them all perfection of life because they took shelter of the holy name. And they live by the principles. They live by the principles of their prescribed duties and responsibilities. when they actually understood the Lord's teachings. Janava Devi, the wife of Lord Nityananda Prabhu, she was respected as the senior most acharya of our whole sampradaya by Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, Jiva Goswami, and all the devotees in Navadweep because of her spiritual position. This is understanding the essence. Saragrahi, a real devotee, is always seeking to understand the essence, but at the same time does not neglect one's prescribed responsibilities in the Varnashram system as far as possible, as far as what is practical for executing Krishna consciousness. So yes, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told the tattvavadis that uh, the supreme perfection of life is ecstatic love of God. And the only way to achieve it is chanting the holy names. And it is our responsibility to Srila Prabhupada to create a type of exemplary society where everyone is encouraged protected and cared for in such a way with such good exemplary leadership that they will never ever give up the principles of chanting the holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Thank you very much. Would anyone like to make comments? So many senior devotees here can chastise me, correct me. Is there time for questions or shall we end here? Is there just one or two questions? Yes. I cannot hear what you say. Maharaj, could you please speak about Madhavi Devi, who is a close associate of Lord Chaitanya, and uh, how that worked, as we know that also sannyasis, they avoid the, the association of women. Could you please speak about that? Yes, very good. Madhavi was one of Lord Chaitanya's, what, Three and a half most confidential associates. Who were the three and a half? Sikhi Mahiti and his sister Madhavi Devi. Yes. One of so she was in a very very exalted position. Her devotion, her her, her inner loving service. There is not so much spoken about her pastimes. But we understand from this wonderful verse that her and her brother, Sikhi Mihiti, were two amongst the four most confidential associates of the Lord. Now, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he taught that sannyasis should not deal with the opposite sex for sense gratification, and he was very strict. In fact, Chota Haridas, when he went out begging and made his mistake, he went to the house of Madhavi Devi, <laughs> who was absolutely pure and exalted. Yes? 
He went to the house of Madhavi Devi, but you know he he transgressed the principles of a sannyasi. Didn't it say that he, uh, he he looked at the house? He looked at a young lady with another desire. Now, of course, Chota Haridas was a great personality, and Lord Chaitanya used him as an example. But still, he used this example to teach the world that as a sannyasi, it is our responsibility to society not to deal with the opposite sex for the purpose of sense gratification. Either gross or subtle is the duty of a sannyasi. Lord Chaitanya made this very strict. But then Prabhupada in one morning walk in Mayapur, he gave a very interesting explanation. He said, on one hand, Lord Chaitanya banished Chotahari Das to show the example of how sannyasis have to be strict in this principle. On the other hand, he asked Shivananda Sain how his wife was. <laughs> and Shivananda Sain said she's pregnant with a child. And Lord Chaitanya was so happy, he actually said, name the child Paramananda Puridas. Yes, name the child Paramananda. So for a grihasta, Lord Chaitanya was very happy to hear that he was having babies <laughs> and giving the names for the babies. But for a sannyasi, if even a glance with the wrong intention, he was very strict. Yes, so Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to teach people that they have to follow their disciplines according to Varnashram Dharma very carefully for the pleasure of Krishna. Does that answer your question? Hari Hari Yes, Prabhu. Maharaj, how do we understand our prescribed duties in this age of Kali? We need Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. The principles we have explained and Prabhupada describes so elaborately within his books, but through the Sadhus and the Guru, we get practical time, place, and circumstance application of that, which is also important. If we read in Prabhupada's books, everything is there in its classic traditional form. But in his letters, so many times he taught devotees how, according to their particular time, place, and circumstance,